everybody, this is Travis Hansen, Speed Coach, and today I want to discuss with you um, a particular topic that may be a little bit uncommon or utilized, but maybe just unrecognized is kind of the way I look at it, and that's going to be, it's going to be a two or three part series, knee savers for athletes, and the first knee saver strategy that I want to discuss is just implement the implementation of box jumps. So most coaches do it and just may not recognize all the value uh, you know, consisting of a box jump. So. Uh, reason number one, it's a natural deload technique or strategy for the lower extremities. So you're omitting gravity, which is going to reduce acceleration momentum, and thus it's going to reduce total impact you know, through your foot, all the way up through your hips, shoulders, everywhere else. So if you're a beginner, this is good because your structure might be weak. Um, it really applies to the whole continuum of a uh, you know, athletic skill or uh, experience level. So if you have beginners, structure is weaker, so you remove that. The, uh, the chance of injury at the onset of a training program where, where the body's a little bit more vulnerable and it hasn't adapted yet to the training stressors. Uh, so it's great for beginners, but also advanced athletes. You know, if you're going through that grind week in and week out, just taking your body to the limits, it, it's good um, to be able to implement box jumps and their variations for a one to three or four week period. You know, just to ensure that you're getting out of recovery debt and that all those structures, especially the slow healing structures, your joints and connective tissues and all that is recuperating well. Um, and you know, high level athletes are performing at a high level, so their impacts multiplied by the, the vast number of contacts is really going to add up. So I think it's a really smart strategy and just a great prehab or injury preventative uh, a measure. Uh, number two, the beauty of it is that you can still build speed and power um, with box jumps, even though you're emitting you know, some of the gravity and uh, some of that the dropping back down in momentum. Uh, with the exercise, it's, it, 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 it's all through the concentric phase, so you're really just you're jumping as high as you can, still building those qualities. Um, so it's another reason why it's a great drill. Uh, drill number three, landing skill. I still, I don't know about all you guys, but I still see a lot of athletes that don't exhibit proper joint ankles and, and landing, uh, you know, positions, force absorption patterns, uh, you know, during movement and, and plyometrics. So uh, it's reason number three. Reason number four, it's a great source of overload still. I mean, you're not necessarily adding more resistance, but there's still a demand, you know, with a higher box height to be able to summon uh, more power and recruit your muscles and motor units and, and to recruit those things faster. So there is still a source of overload. So it's really kind of an, an ideal selection in a lot of ways is that it provides all the benefits and it removes all the risks and the way I look at it. And then, you know, number five, it's a great source of variation. So it's just another exercise that you can add to your menu for your athletes or, you know, just general fitness participants or enthusiasts. Um, really is a staple exercise in our programs and should be in anybody's programs for the aforementioned reasons. So uh, that's it on box jumps, just knee savers part one. And then I'm going to get to part two either this week or next, uh, next week, which is going to be the box squat, another great way to save your knees. So, thanks for listening.